In the last few months, gay men, especially, have been in a very unusual position. They've had not just one, not just two, but three hero figures. Just think about it. Mark Ashton, the real-life hero of the film Pride. Recently, tragic events in Sydney have produced a hero named Tori Johnson. And then there's Alan Turing, the most famous of the three because he has a film made about him called The Imitation Game. And he is supposedly the father of the computer. And he was also one of the key people who broke the German Enigma code during the war. Were they heroes, these three men? Well, it depends how you define the word hero, isn't it? I think if you look, it says heroes are those that take the lead, that take command. These three people, Mark Ashton, Tory Johnson and Alan Turing, did take the lead in their particular realms. Alan Turing was a gay man in the 1950s when it wasn't a good idea to be a gay man because it was illegal. He killed himself, so they say, in 1954. For two years before his death, he'd been working on something called morphogenesis, which involved looking at plants, especially the daisy. His theory was that if you mathematically could find out how a daisy grew, you could find out how everything in the world grew, so that potentially everything and everyone could reach their real and true potential. This would not sit too well with certain strict or rigid establishments, such as religions, such as science, such as aspects of academia. Because they're very keen on people who obey. And let's look at the word obey. Obey means to be subject, to serve, to give ear, to pay attention to. And if you go and see The Imitation Game, and I hope you will, you'll note that the opening line of the film is Benedict Cumberbatch as Alan Turing saying on the soundtrack, Are you paying attention? Now, Alan Turing paid attention. He paid attention not just to mathematics, although he was a mathematician, but also to chemistry, to physics, to all aspects of natural science, but also to the key to what makes life. And in his view, what makes life is life itself. And to him, life is universal. And universal means belonging to everyone. Now this again does not go down well with certain establishments. They don't want everything to be free and open. They despise openness and freedom. They despise disobedience. Now, if you're a gay man living a gay life, you're actually being disobedient. Not to nature. No, you're being totally obedient to nature because you're paying attention to your own nature and you're reaching your full potential as a gay man. But you're being disobedient to the powers that currently be. And this is why Alan Turing should be known in the 21st century as a 21st century genius, not just someone who operated in the 20th century. Because my theory is that now that Turing's work, the last two years of his life, is being examined and deciphered, we are going to be in a whole new world of discovery. Because we will be looking at how everything interconnects. We'll be looking at universality. We'll be looking at what is common to us all. And so, establishments, you better look out because people are going to be questioning things in ways they've never questioned things before. And we will see why Alan Turing is not only a genius of the 21st century, but one of its true heroes.